Our intro music is provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Hey, this is Gary from Night Dreams Talk Radio. I want to welcome a new sponsor to our show, PhoenixShaving.com. I know what you're thinking, right? Oh, another disposable razor company. Well, the fact is they're not. You remember the razors that your father and his father shaved with? Did you ever notice they didn't have, well, the embarrassing razor burn or ingrown hairs or the razor bumps after they shaved? Did you notice they were also relaxed after they were done shaving? Well, the problem is these big corporations want to sell you razor after razor after razor. Think about how much money you spend a year on razors. Or do you use electric razor? <laughs> then you're going to find out what razor burn is. So you need to check out Phoenix Shaving Starter Kits. They come complete with the soap, the brush, and a two and a half month supply of blades. And the most important part of it, a all metal razor built to last generations. So, hey, you can donate it to one of your sons when they turn 18. Check out phoenixshaving.com and tell them that Gary from Night Dream said, hey, I want one. That's phoenixshaving.com now. Hey, what can I say? This is Gary. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. Hey, tonight we got a special guest. If you're into like scary movies and magic, well, tonight you tuned into, well, a good show. I'm going to bring them on right away. So I'm going to, well, let's see, make sure this works. Okay, we got that there. And, and we got that there. Are you there, Ron? Yes, indeed. How are you doing today? I am doing great. How are you? I am alive. And at my age, every day you wake up, you kind of look at the sky and you go, gee, I'm happy. I'm alive. Hey, why don't you tell everybody who you are, what you do for a living, and then we'll uh, go from there. Absolutely. Uh, well, my name is Ron Fitzgerald, otherwise known as Master Ron Fitzgerald of Fitzgerald's Realm of Magic. And I am a gothic illusionist, which means I do dark and theatrical and fun uh, illusions in my show, Fitzgerald's Realm. And uh, I also am an actor in horror films, and I made, I combined all those skills into, into a movie that's out right now called Fitzgerald, uh, I'm sorry, called Dark Realm, and that's out on Amazon Prime Video right now. Oh, wow. And uh, how long have you been into the magic? I started performing... Actually, I, I, I got a magic kit when I was a, a kid, and that started me off on my whole uh, road to uh, show business and all of the dark, sticky fun that followed. <laughs> and that was, <laughs> I started when I was actually like eight years old. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I got when I was about eight years, well, actually about five years old, maybe even four years See, there old. There you go. My, uh, my uh, mom and dad, they couldn't find the doctor's kit for Christmas, and they gave me a nurse kit. You know, and I opened yeah. that up, and I go, I don't want to be a nurse when I grow up. So, hey, it would have been better if it was a magic kit or a doctor's kit or something. So that's what got you. There you go. So is that kind of what got you into the magic? You got a little kit and you started playing around with it and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When I was a kid, I mean, I think I've talked to so many people and, and so many people have come up to me and said that they had an experience with, you know, like theatrical magic like that and, and they had a magic kit when they were a kid or something that they got for a birthday or Christmas, something like that. And, but for some reason with me, it, 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 uh, it, it stuck. And uh, for some reason, you know, and I didn't have the language then or anything to really explain or anything, but it's like I felt that that was a, a viable vehicle expression and I was off to the races and started, you know, to perform and then, you know, construct my own shows and go out and take them out uh, into the community and stuff. And then, and then much longer from there, you know, much further and wider from there as I, as I developed my own style and everything like that, which was, you know, in the beginning, it was very traditional as birds and bunnies and, you know, tuxedos and things like that. Very, very old school because that's, you know, the, 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 you know, the people I studied with and everything and, you know, and my first archetypes of that were all of that old kind of thing. But even then I thought, you know, kind of the classic magician with the black tuxedo in the cave and everything. Even then as a kid, I thought that dude kind of looks like Dracula. And I thought <laughs> that made it cool and fun for me. <laughs> 
Oh, and wow. later, you know, I, I changed it all to get to, you know, reflect my love of, you know, all things weird and odd and comic books and, and certainly horror and the paranormal and the occult and everything and all of that dark fun rolled into the show that I always wanted to see that nobody else had ever done. And still, it really isn't doing anything like that. There, there's others that, that have done it, but not quite the way I have and, and coupled it with, with the horror genre. Uh-huh. And, um, and then, then, you know, since then I've, I've taken it, you know, all the way from, from Hollywood to Hong Kong, I've been all over the place with it, you know, and, and then directors came to me and said, Hey, you've got a really cool look, you know, uh, would you like to be in my horror film? And that got me into, into acting and everything. So that, uh, it's been an interesting ride, you know, from that start when I was eight years old, opening up that magic kit, I had no idea what was waiting for me in there. <laughs> well, how, how many times were on? Did you try doing that milk trick with a bowl or a cup around, in, you know, in your parents' home when you were a little kid and make a big mess? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did that a couple yeah. times. Oh, sure. Yeah. Did you really? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. did. I even did it in junior yeah. high school, a couple, you know, tricks. I, you know, a friend of mine was into magic and he tried to teach me some tricks. But you know what? Some people mm-hmm. just aren't talented. And it, it was something I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't do. I tried. It, it is a particular particular thing but it's interesting i think it's so really cool about it that it it, it, it's an experience that so many people have had either everybody's seen it or in in so many people have have, have, you know had an experience with themselves like that or other ways and you know like i say you know it's one of those things that it's, it's very few people you know, find it that's uh, a thing in their skill set and want to continue with it. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's like a lot of things. I, I don't know what it is. You kind of have to have a bit of an aptitude for it. And if you do, you know, then people will, will roll along with it and everything. But that's interesting that you, you had an experience like that with it where you were, you had tried it out yourself and everything. It just wasn't, wasn't quite working out. Well, it didn't work. I mean, that used to be where I lived a few miles away. There was a trick shop or a yeah. magic shop and, uh, I'd yes, go there with my yeah. friend, and we buy cards, and we buy this, and they even, he, even sold gum. You, you give people gum, and they would chew it, and it tastes good, and it turned their whole face black. But uh, those type of tricks got me in trouble in school, and I was up in the office quite a bit. So you know, <laughs> you know what is really interesting, Ron? Uh, Facebook. What? Uh, there is a couple people mm-hmm. that are into magic. You know, and walking on the streets and doing all these tricks in front of people, and you look at them and you go, "Oh my God, how can they do it? It it looks so real." Yes, yeah. Well, the, and that's what's interesting is sometimes, in, in, you know, uh, rather than the theatrical brand of stuff, that what I do that you know on on the smaller things, you know, and close up magic and everything, especially we can be right in somebody's face and something's happening like that. Something is some, you know, magic effect and something's floating, something's going somewhere, something is doing something like that. And it can be that's that, that can have as much impact in something small and up close and personal like that uh, as much or more than illusions that range in the, you know, thousands of dollars. Well, what type can of have such an impact? And, well, Ron, what type of some of the illusions do you do? And, and what are you famous for? Well, I, I, uh, a lot of, uh, odd things. I eat razor blades in the show, which is a huge audience favorite. Well, it's hard to get razor I, blades. Number one. Well, well, you can, you can, you can still get them at the, uh, you know, say, uh, your, your, your corner drugstore or something like that yeah. or online. But you know, it's not like we're using them anymore. They're all cartridges now, but everybody recognizes that and knows what they are. And, I, I, that was something when I started to do that, I thought, well, how outdated is that? You know, because it is just these old, you know, uh, steel razor blades, but everybody, everybody, you know, gets it and knows it and knows they're sharp and understands that. So, well, I demonstrate them in the beginning of the routine, uh, to show they're not, uh, doctored or anything like that. And, um, uh, so that, that becomes one thing where I'm, you know, eating the razor blades in the show and everything like that. And that gets it into kind of a sideshow tradition and, and some of those things. And there's some of the things that, that so many of them do now that are, that can be close up and can be also, uh, considered kind of like that, that, uh, you know, more like the dangerous or stunt kind of, uh, illusions and things like that. Um, and there's uh, sometimes some blood involved in that and things. So uh, people like that. They go away talking about that. I have people that, that will sit there and they can hardly stand to watch me do it. 
but you know, people will stand there, they'll sit in the front row and they'll watch me, you know, some women through their, through their fingers that are covering their face. I've even had, I've done it, you know, and uh, I've opened up for some bands and things like that. And I've even had big, huge, burly, you know, bouncers, biker dudes that told me they couldn't, you know, barely watch me do that. So that just <laughs> kind of talked to the, to the, the strength of that particular uh, routine. So I do things like that. That's something everybody, everybody goes away talking about. Uh, I, and then I do some other fun things like uh, I, uh, I, I chop off people's heads on stage. I have a decapitation illusion. I have another illusion where I cremate somebody live on stage in a coffin. It's all set up kind of like a, uh, a witch burning uh, effect. Oh, wow. uh, and and you get the screams too? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, oh, the, 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 you get yeah, goosebumps it, already. You know that you, you, you love it. You, you get to see all of this stuff. If you watch my movie, dark realm, because it is a, it is a blend of genres of, of a uh, live performance. A lot of it is my show shot in front of a, a live audience. And then that is, is married with and coupled. It's artistically blended with a uh, horror film narrative. So there is a storyline that goes in and through and around all of this live performance. And then there's a storyline and a story arc that takes place. And it's got an actual surprising ending to it as well. But, but throughout all of that, you get to see me perform all of these illusions and everything. And it would, so it fits well. It's like my, my style of show, you know, like you say, it's, it's kind of, you know, spine chilling and, and, and chilling weirdness. And, and yet it's fun because I have a sense of humor about it as well. And then that's then mixed with the, uh, the horror narrative. So it is. It, it's, a, it's a lot of... <clears throat> a lot of illusions like that, but yeah, you'd have to see it. And to see that live, you know, it, uh, people really like it. It is not, uh, your typical, uh, illusion or magic show in any way. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. Um, you know, no. and talk about biker dudes on a biker. <laughs> I tell you, you already, Are you, see, there you go. Yeah. yeah you, you already, you'd love this. Not really. You already got bumps all over my arm and I got bumps on top of the bumps already. So yeah. I mean, do you, with the audience, how, how do they handle some of these uh, tricks you do? Well, like I say, I bring it on with a sense of, uh, with a, with a, a sense of humor about a lot of it, you know, and it's, and it's fun and it's dark humor. That's why I call my, my brand, I call dark sticky fun because it is, it is dark and it's dark genre entertainment, but it, it is presented in a way with kind of a humor about itself, uh, that makes it accessible to a larger mainstream audience. I mean, you know, horror is like 20% of the mainstream box office and, you know, Halloween and things like that. And Halloween's second retail sales only to Christmas. And so, so dark genre is really, you know, gone pop. It, it's really part, you know, uh, of our mainstream entertainment uh, today. Uh, and that makes what I do pretty accessible to a lot of people, even though what I'm doing is, is, uh, it can be pretty, you know, I guess extreme and at times, you know, talking about like the decapitation illusion, I have performed that on, on the morning news that, that has gone out, you know, across the country. And, uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, if they thought it was, uh, you know, all right enough to, uh, to put on uh, morning television, you know that it's that it's in a style where it's it's uh, it's extreme, but it is still presentable and palatable to people as they're you know uh, starting their day. Uh, how so do, how does it, it is? It, hmm? How's how's the audience uh, handled like the decapitation part? I mean, well, what, is, is there are times when they they audibly gasp. I have heard the audience gasp when when the 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 head is coming, coming off. Uh, and that is, uh, quite satisfying for me, but it, and that's not always the case. I mean, I get I, with my audience that, 